Oh, hello again. So this is structural analysis and design, made fun and easy. This is this is um, another one of my videos on structural steelwork design to BS five nine five A. So this is for design of a braced, well for a rim, for a structural steelwork column. This is going to be. Uh, it doesn't say in the question, but it's a braced short column. So uh, this is a very simple case. Well, with one concentric axial load, it's just to get people started off in, in, into how to do these designs. But I want to look at the basics as well because um, there's not very many good videos on how to do like the section classification, like the the ratios of the of the the width of the flange to the thickness and things like that. Things that because um, nowadays obviously you just got your computer programs. People in the office they just use a design program. I never even think about this stuff, but it's probably important to use it because to understand it because um, um, it's, it, <coughs> you, you're do, doing design, you're responsible for the design. If you're just using the computer, it could be wrong and you don't know. So you need to know all the basics as well. Um, so this is part in this is part one. Um, I'm just going to do the load combinations, and otherwise the video will be too long. But I'm just going to do the load cases and the load combination. That we need to look at so this is part one of three um please like the video at the end and subscribe to the channel and um, please don't forget to donate if you can do so you can let me make more videos like this hopefully uh, they're useful um so um let's get started on the question so it basically says an internal column in a brace steel frame building is is subjected to the factored actual loads given to the unfactored axial loads given in table two. Sorry, yeah, it's definitely unfactored. So these are characteristic ones. This is table two, which I copied out. Um, so basically, table two, table two load in the column. Magnitude of axial loads, we've got 500 dead. Compression, 400 imposed live. Compression, 100 for wind. Compression, 100 for wind tension and those seem to be the load cases also called the load cases so dead is 500 compression and pose is 400 compression wind is 100 um, compression and there's another there's another load, load case for the wind which is tension could be when the wind, wind blows the other way off um, so then it says it is suggested that 203 by 203 by times 52 UC that's universal column section UC stands for universal column section of S275, the standard 275 grade steel, be used for this column. The column is held in position. Uh, this is another important bit. I'm going to do in part two, we'll be looking at the fixity conditions. The column is held in position at both, both top and bottom axis and partially restrained in the direction about the YY axis. Oh, yeah, refer to the diagram for orientation of the axis at both the top and the bottom. The axes are shown in figure. It should be Q, Q, Q. Oh yeah, figure two, Q two. So I'll just read that again because this is important about the fixity. The column is held in position about about both top and bottom axis. So, one more time. The column is held in position about both top and bottom axis and partially restrained in direction about the Y Y axis. Refer to the diagram at top to the bottom. The yeah, axis is shown in figure Q2. So it's this one. Well, I've just drawn it. It's this one. So it says it's held. It's held. It's held in position about about both top and bottom axis. So held in position about both axis. The column is held in position about both top and bottom axis. And partially restrained, and partially restrained, in direction about the Y Y axis. So I'll cover this in more detail in video two. Video one is this video is just to get started on the uh, um, uh, the low combinations. The overall height of the column between end states is six. So just in summary, I'll draw it out here. Um, oh yeah, sorry, I can't draw a universal column section in three D and Word. It just it would take too long. So that should be a UC section like this, like this is a cross section of it. The loading is concentric, see below. Oh yeah, the height just said there, last bit I forgot. 
The overall height of the column between end restraints is six meters. So the column is six meters high between there and there. The so this is a cross section. So here's this is a oh yeah, this will be important later on, but this is a doubly doubly symmetric section because if you take yeah down the center line it's symmetric about yy and it's also symmetric about xx. So the xx is horizontal and the yy is vertical, but note that the flanges are parallel to the xx axis. The web is parallel to the yy axis. So it says first of all, determine the design load and compression considering all the possible load combinations. Oh yeah. So for the design for the exam technique, the exam is a six marks. The time allowed is six times one point. So as I worked out before, we got one point eight minutes per mark. So six times one point eight is six times zero point eight times six is six plus. 6 times 8 over 10, 6 times 8 is 48, divided by 10 is 4.8, so that's 6. 6 plus 4.8 is 10.8 minutes. Actually, personally, I don't think that you need 8 minutes, but... So, I I will double-check this, but from memory, the design combinations are in this... are in this... The design combinations are in this combination and using the following load factors. So, combination 1... That is, uh, low combination one is oh yeah the lo so the low case low case we we'll say low case one two three four load case one dead load low case two live load low case three uh, wind load uh, compression load case four wind load tension so load combination one is one point four times dead load plus one point six times live load. Uh, load combination two is 1.2 dead load plus 1.2 live load plus 1.2 wind load load case three compression not tension and uh, this is the wind load so we have we have two wind load cases one compression two is tension so in this question we are looking at the compression case so let's call it yeah i mean i put there this will be load combination two one but it's basically going to be load combination two using load case three so now we got that all we got to do this is really simple we just update the table that i had above to show the ultimate load and the total ultimate load looking at compression load combination only so if column one magnitude of axial load 500 that's for the type of load, dead, direction compression. So the load combination one safety factor is 1.4. So the factored ultimate load in load combination one is 500 times 1.4. That's 700. Because 0.4 times 500 is two is um, the same as five, uh, 500 times 1 plus 500 times 0.4. 500 times 0.4 is equal to 0.4 is equal to sorry 4 times 500 divided by uh, divided by 10 4 times 500 is obviously 2000 divided by 10 is 200 so 700 ah uh, again you don't need a calculator to do this it's, it's too easy to so load combination 2 um oh yeah the safety factor is 1.2 actually so if i do this column first then you can follow how i get the total uh, load so the magnitude of the axial load is 500, that's dead. Compression, so for load combination one, the safety factor for the dead load is 1.4, and so the ultimate factor load is 500 times 1.4 is equal to 700. For the imposed load, unfactored 400, compression, the load factor is 1.6, so the ultimate load is 400 times 1.6 is 640. In this load combination one, the wind load is not considered, so the load case 3 and 4 are not considered, so, oh yeah, just to go through that again, 400, so for the, the imposed load, safety factor is 1.6 on the load, 400 times 1.6, so 1 times 400 is 400, Point 0.6 times 400 equals 6 times 400 divided by 10, 6 times 400 is 2400, 2400 divided by 10, 240, this is a really quick way to just add this up without a calculator 
you do this so fast in the exam. Um, so the total factored ultimate load in load combination 1 is 700 plus 640 equals 1340. And so for load combination, so for load combination 2, um, the safety factors are 1.2 on the dead load, 1.2 on the live load and 1.2 on the wind load, load case 3 compression. So 500 times 1.2 is 500 plus 0.2 times 500. 0.2 times 500 is 2 times 500 divided by 10, so that's 1,000 divided by 10 is 100, so 500 plus 100 is 600. For the imposed, it's 400 times 1.2 is 400 plus 0.2 times 400. 2 times 400 is um, 800 divided by 10 is 80, so it's 480. And the last one is easy, 100 times 1.2 is 120. So the total low combination 2 Factored ultimate load is 600 plus 480 plus 120 equals 1200. 600 plus 400 is 1080 plus 120 is 200, so the total is 1200 kilonewtons. So this is, it said, it definitely says in the question, just check, the, in, determine the design load and compression only. So uh, that's the biggest. The, the, there's one more load. There's one more load combination, which is the uplift. But at the moment, it ha we we are just looking at the design load and compression only, not not considering the uplift load. Um, oh yeah, there's just so so basically the maximum design load for the com combinations for compression is thirteen forty kilonewtons. I'm just saying, um, just a quick note about. Um, concentric loading, eccentric loading. So, in let's take a second. Let's take a second to note that these loads are all actual concentric. It does not say that there are any eccentricities from connection details. So usually, in practice, it won't be this simple because the beams are usually connected to columns using connections which introduce some eccentricity to the connection. For example, cleat connection, the centre of the beam line can be, say, 60 millimetres from the column face and, say, 100 millimetres from the centre of area of the section. So that's, that's just my um, note on the eccentric loading. And then in part B... Um, it says check whether the UC is required to support a tensile force. So this is basically um, looking at load combination three, which is which is the the third load combination. The exam technique it says two marks. So the time allowed for this is two times one point eight, which is two plus one point six, or three point six millimeters. So for the ten for the for the to check if you you need a tension force. You do naught. The load combination would be just the self weight times 0 0.9, 0 0.9 gk plus 1.5 wk in tension. Gk is equal to 500. Wk equals to two, let's say minus 100, so we know which way it's going. That means that load combination three, the actual compression in force will be 0 0.9 times 500 minus 1.4 times 100, and 0 0.9 times 500 is. 450 because it's 9 times 5 divided by 10 9 times 500 divided by 10 4500 divided by 10 minus 140 that is 310 it's greater than 0 therefore this column does not need to be designed for a tension load the dead weight on the column is greater than the uplift forties using the load factors as per BS 595i ok so this is uh, just to keep it to make sme because it's already 15 minutes long, this, otherwise this video is going to be too long. This is the end of part one. Please tune in again for part two and three to follow. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and uh, donate if you can so I can do more videos. Thanks.